Welcome back to the Invention Licensing Show. I'm your host, David Fidoa, and as you know, I'm always here to help you license your products. We're doing the mini series on uh, invention licensing contracts. Today, we're going to talk about net sales definitions and royalty rates. So to jump right into it, net sales, definitions, and royalty rates, super important. And as I said in the first video, everybody flips through the contract and make sure that there's a 7% royalty or whatever it is that they're looking for. And they say, that's great, but it's not. Because the net sales definition actually has a bigger impact on your royalty rate or the actual money you make. You can have a 25% royalty rate, but your net sales definition can take out all of that profit and leave you with $0. And so you need to make sure and know and understand how that net sales definition can work in your favor as you move through building your own licensing contract with a potential licensee. So the deal with net sales definitions. So when you say licensee is to pay licensor a royalty of blank, let's just use 7%. So licensee to pay licensor a royalty of 7% of net sales. Net sales to be defined as, then this definition will have a bigger impact on your royalties than the actual number. Because net sales can be defined in a way, and I've actually seen this example. So net sales, to, to use like uh, simple numbers, let's say your product retails at 20, so your wholesale is 10. So your wholesale is 10, so your 7% is 7% uh, of the $10. But how they define the net sales. So they say $10, $10 is your, your selling price. The net sales is defined as sale price minus allowances, deductions, shipping, cost of goods, uh, key employee salaries. So literally they're taking the $10 that they're receiving on every product. And so let's say for example, they sell $100,000 worth of product. And so you get a 7% royalty. So with a straightforward sales definition of a net sales, where they just say 7% of sales, then you're getting $7,000, correct? $100,000 in sales, 7% royalty, $7,000. But, uh, and I'm just using general numbers, uh, for math simplicity's sake. But when they say net sales definition is sales minus allowances, deductions, key player salary, cost of goods. So let's say your $100,000 was here. That key player salary was let's say $50,000. So right now your royalty is now cut in half. Then they have cost of goods. Let's say that was $30,000. So now you're down to $20,000 that your 7% is based off of. Then they have all the deductions. So those deductions can bring it down to 10 grand. So you went from $7,000 that year to 700 based on your definition. And so, uh, you know, I have licensing deals that I signed early on in my career. I didn't understand that. And so some of my licensing agreements have a net sales definition where they're deducting over 50%. So my royalty rate is uh, effectively not 7%, but 3.5% because I didn't understand that early in my career. And so I want you to understand that when you get in the licensing deal, the net sales definition is just as, if not more important than the actual number. Uh, and jokingly, some people say, uh, you set the price and I'll set the terms. That's what I'm saying. You can, you can set yourself up with 100% royalty, but if they have the terms of how you get paid, then they can make a deduction all the way down to zero. And so that's why I like a lot of the times, very straightforward royalties. I would take a 5% of sales than 7% of a net sales definition with deductions because the 5% is not under their control. They are trying to push sales as high as they can and as many, uh, as much dollars as they could. But with a net sales definition with deductions, they're trying to make reductions to sales so they pay you less right? Companies are not necessarily trying to cheat you. They're just trying to make sure that they're making as much money as possible. But when you have a much more straightforward definition of net sales, where you're just getting a percentage of sales or a dollar amount per unit, and to break into that a little bit, uh, 
the dollar amount per unit can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. So let's say your product sells for uh, $20 and you're getting a dollar per unit. And so you're essentially getting a 5% royalty, but you set it at $1. So no matter how much their price fluctuates, if their price goes to $50, you're still getting $1, but now you're down to a 2% royalty effectively. But let's say that you know their price, they need to start discounting it, right? And you're still getting $1 per unit. Well, your price is going up. Um, there's an inflationary uh, aspect. So over time, let's say your licensing deal is, is over 10 years and you're getting $1. Well, that $1 is different today than it is in 10 years. And so I like it because it's simple, it's structured, it's straightforward. It's they get to plug in a cost and say, our cost of goods to manufacture is $5 plus $1 to the inventor. Our hard cost is $6 on this. We sell it for 20, our profit margin is $14, right? They love that. But then over time, things can change. And that's why, you know, having a percentage versus a dollar amount is there's pluses and minuses to both. A percentage, 5% of sales, what if they have to discount? What if, you know, and, but then they start selling more volume at the discounted price. Well, you're getting less per unit, but you're getting more uh, in general. And so all of these things are possible. One thing I recommend when negotiating net sales definitions and royalty rates is companies will come in and say, you know, we wanna give you 30 cents a unit, or we wanna give you 5% royalty. Those are two different things that are exactly the same, but it's the language that they wanna use. So use the language that they wanna use. So when they're saying 30 cents a unit, then stay in a dollar per unit conversation. Uh, I see a lot of inventors trying to change things over back and forth between percentages and things get confusing. You wanna be simple, straightforward, and to the point with these companies on getting these licensing deals together. So when they start talking in dollars, talk dollars. If they're talking in percent, talk in percent. And that will help you put your deal together and then read through your net sales definitions so that you understand how it will work for you and how it will work for them. And I like things that are clear and straightforward. Uh, sometimes I see companies that like them a little bit muddy in case they're not making the profit that they want so that they can start to increase their net sales uh, or they can, sorry, increase the deductions that they have from net sales to increase their profit margin. I don't like it. Some companies will only agree to deals with that type of structure. So you have to play the game, have conversations, be open and be, be flexible to work with companies on how they wanna work. Thank you for tuning in to that episode of License Your Invention with David Fidoa. And as you know, I'm always here to help you license your product. If you like that episode or got anything out of it, give me a thumbs up or subscribe now. If you're looking for coaching or anybody to help you get your product licensed, check out inventtribe.com uh, for more information. The next episode in the mini series on licensing contract clauses is uh, minimums and how to get them into your contract.